Hello, welcome back to Perk Industries. Yes, Perk. Last month I received a message from my friend Matt Cargill who is uh, the head honcho behind uh, Noise Titans Sly and the Family Drone. You not heard of them? You should. <laughs> And Matt asked me if I would be willing to have a look at building him some kind of two-channel bent video mixer. So a video mixer that glitches two different feeds in, spits out uh, a composite uh, image at the end, and whether I would be willing to see if I could build him something along the lines. So he sent me a, a video, it's this one here. Um, how to build a dirty video mixer part one by Eva Landry as a sort of uh, starting point for where we might go and in this video Eva references the work of a Dutchman called Karl Klomp he's a pioneer in the world of uh, lo-fi video a uh, quick look at his website showcases some of his weird wonderful actually pretty cool looking uh, devices that he's either built or bent to um, yeah modify different types of video so that was a good starting point. The basic circuit that he comes up with actually mixes together two sources, here's the image, um, using very, very straightforward um, system here of a variable resistor 1K that blends the two together, as well as two switches that cut in and out the signal. Um, digging the internet, as you can see, there's a few different ideas here, but generally speaking, the main one that uh, seems to be quite popular is the the clomp design because of the simplistic nature it's a passive circuit there's no power needed um and and, it, and it's it's actually really really good it works amazingly and some of the example videos i've seen on youtube uh make it look really good but what i wanted to do is as always add an element of audio and i really wanted to add an audio in to disturb distort the signal that would be then spat out um as the output because thinking about how uh, Sly work or how Matt works as well, it might be a good idea to have some sort of audio interference going on in there as well. Um, but that adds then uh, yeah, another complex um, issue to this, uh, this whole design. And that is the different frequencies involved at video level and at audio level. And they're both sort of polar opposites. So um, yeah, I thought I'd uh, start having completed the research and looked at some different uh, examples of circuits, start sketching together and butchering different ones to come up with my own. Using the clomp idea as a basis, but then patching in some other ideas. Um, and as I did so, came up with my own design that I wanted to build. Now, um, on this shot here, you'll see that there are some additional uh, switches, uh, push to make switches, and some other additional cut switches that I added under a sub mixer. Um, through testing that didn't work at all and what we ended up coming up with was this final design and this is the circuit diagram if you wish to have a go yourself largely spoke speaking it's the uh, the clomp design but uh, with a few added extra features as well namely those uh, the audio patch that goes straight into the main video 1k um, mixing variable resistor so this is what we came up with this is the final design this is the gammy AV mixer and features wise it has got um, well it's got input one input two and an out all just RCA connectors and then it has a main blend dial between video one video two uh, cut switches for video one and video two and then a audio in on the side of jack there as well as an audio sort of level um, a, a dial so you can control how much of that audio feed goes in 
a little goes a long way and I really didn't anticipate uh, how much of an effect the audio would have on that overall video signal but still quite cool um, and an interesting way uh, to sort of uh, change things up a little tiny bit 100% lo-fi as well yeah really really uh, glitchy imagery that comes out um, afterwards so um, uh, that, that was what we came up with um, what I didn't really figure for was that the testing would actually be the hardest part of the whole process um, in that I'd need to come up with two uh, phono RCA out um, devices that I could use to test it with. Thankfully my old monitor here accepts those sorts of signals so I could just plug the, the output from the mixer straight into the monitor as you will see. Um, so I had to go digging around to try and find some uh, sources for video that we could use. Uh, we've gone with a couple of old faithfuls. Panasonic camcorder spits out saves to a VHS-S um, that's got a live feed straight out of the front there, so we use that as signal number one. And then we went back to an old favourite, the PS2. Uh, this is new shape PS2, but the cable on the back also has a RCA output. So those were our two signals that we used. And um, in a world of HDMI, you'd have thought, um, yeah, that would have been um, really, really easy to deal with. But turns out, if you're going lo-fi, you're going to have to go and uh, yeah, find some interesting sources of visuals for this. Um, so that's what you'll see in the demo here that's coming up. Um, what you'll see is the effect of the two sources being blended together in various ways. And then finally you'll see how adding the audio into the signal drastically affects the, uh, the output that you get at the video end. Um, and, and that pretty much brings together the whole of the demo. So, uh, let's have a look. 